Going back to the beginning of the film, did you already have the family members of these rapists lined up? Did you know how to contact them? Because I mean, you went into some very, looks like rural areas and... That's right. How did all that Basically, um, I started off brainstorming what I wanted the film to feel like, to look like. Um, you know, really analyzing what were my objectives in making this film. I then did a, a period of quite intensive research in terms of just finding all the footage I could of the reports, and this was a very, very well covered, um, well reported incident. Um, and I started writing a list of questions for the rapists and worked with a psychiatrist, um, had a, a forensic criminologist help me with some of those questions um, and, and started reading around the whole, you know, the whole subject very um, diligently. And then at a certain point, I managed to get hold of trial transcripts. And of course, I also had appointed a researcher who found some of the addresses through the legal system because all of the court depositions have the name and the address. So we had names and addresses, but we hadn't lined anyone up. Basically, it was a question of doorstepping in pretty much every case other than with the prison because that was set up in advance. And I think it's very hard for me to say because I was never faced with this, but I think if I had been told I couldn't interview those rapists, I might just not have finished this film or maybe not even have started it. To me, that was absolutely imperative. Um, there were three things I wanted to deliver with this film. The first was that the protests should be amplified, that they would be the heartbeat and the pulse of this film, because they are ultimately what um, made me feel very optimistic that the time had come to deal comprehensively with this issue that the world has neglected and abandoned for many years. The second thing was that it was very um, disturbing to me that this young girl, whose entire life was before her, was re just referred to as this 23-year-old medical student in the press, that was it, you know, who had gone to see a movie with a friend. That's all we knew about her. And in fact, until the film came out, nothing more was known about her. So it seemed to me to be crucial to delve into and, and find out and document what we have lost in this girl's murder. Um, and the third and absolutely vital leg of, of my objectives was to understand why men do this and to, you know, if you, if you can't understand them, how are you going to change them? So I needed to know what goes on in the head of a man who, who does this to a woman, who not only gang rapes her, but eviscerates her, who pulls out her intestines, um, and, you know, what his attitudes to women are, where they come from, who the significant female figures in his life had been, what he feels about them, what is his notion of manhood, what is a man, what's a good girl, what's a bad girl, you know, so there were 150 questions I had.